I'll just pull up the chat here. I think we're live. Wait, that's for itchy. I didn't get the. There we are. The notification Wait, usually comes in a couple minutes later. Robert. We are live, live, live. Live, live, live. Good morning, everybody. I'm just trying to get my chat rotated here. There we go. Are you ready to do the intro yet? <laughs> no, not yet. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Creative Learning Hour from Two Bit Circus Foundation. I am Michael, and I am the assistant of Robert. Right? And Robert, what are we doing today? Making a mousetrap car. We are making a mousetrap car. What exactly is a mousetrap car, Robert? It's like a cardboard car okay. that has like something on it, like a mouse trap. Cool. And so how does the car move? You have to speed it with the mouse trap. You have to put something there for it to slam down and then it would move. Ah, that's a creative idea there. So I'm gonna reach off camera here and we have a mouse trap. And you're saying that we want the mouse trap. You're thinking that we like pull up on the mouse trap and launch the mouse trap, mm -hmm. like and make the launch in it and like shoot off a car. Mm -hmm. That's a cool idea. So when you have it already in set, mm -hmm. you put a stick there, mm -hmm. and then it would move. Yeah. With the stick in it, yeah. to leave it in. That is a very cool idea. We could try that suggestion. I really like that plan. I have an idea, too, and we could check out both of the ideas and explore them. Another idea that I have is instead of putting the, the mousetrap off of the car, we can put the mousetrap on the car. Yeah, then, that's what I was saying. Oh, I misunderstood no, you. No, he said on the car. Well, you can't. Who's that person? I don't see I anybody else on camera here. I'm camera shy. All right. Somebody was <laughs> hiding in the corner this whole time. All right. <laughs> okay, welcome, welcome. So, Robert, is this what you were saying? We set the mousetrap on the car, and then you activate it by putting the stick and going. Oh, I misunderstood you then. Well, I, I like that idea, too. Should we get started on planning out how we're going to make our car? All right. Safety first today, right? Robert's got his cool safety. <laughs> You're not supposed to test them out like that, but okay. All right. So, Robert, how are we going to make our car? Hmm. He's looking around. He's looking at the materials that we have. Tell us what we're doing there. I'm going to use these CD players as um, wheels. Okay, so you want to use some CDs as wheels. Cool. And why did you pick the CDs as wheels over these wheels? Because some of these have, have little spikes here that may slow it down. Oh, cool. They might slow it down. Does Daddy have like little spiky things on his tires, on his truck? Like when we go off-roading? But they're rubber. Oh, they're rubber. Okay. And what do you think those little spiky things that under rubber do? They make it go a little faster to like get uphill. Okay. On your truck. And it gives like a traction, right? So you could hold on to something. So you can move. It's called traction. Awesome. Well, let's start with our design of our car. And as Robert said, we could use CDs for wheels or we could use these little ones. And we could explore, maybe, Robert, we could explore the difference between what the wheels do, right? So you have your piece of cardboard there. Are you going to start building with your car over there? Yeah, but I'm figuring out how you put the CD player on. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love it. So how are, how are we going to put the CD player on there? Uh, I don't know. So think about a car, right? 
Like they have it me. like glued in. Are they glued to um, a little spot like this? Okay. Okay. So like we could use this right here. So you're saying the wheel should be glued to here, or should it be glued to your car body? Car body. Okay. So if we glue the wheel here, what do you think is gonna happen? You think the wheel is gonna be able to move? Mm -mm. Why not? Because then it would stay there. Because it's glued. You're right. So so maybe we shouldn't glue the wheel to the body. Okay, cool. Now how are you going to get that to hold there? I'm measuring like how big and small. Nice. I like your thinking and you're going through the engineering process and trying to find out what materials you want to use and how that's going to connect. I need this. Oh, now I have a different idea. I could use this one. I need a hole pull through here <laughs> to make it stick in. And then put it under here, do this under here, uh -huh. to make it move. Okay, so let's try to do that, all right? So first you want to, you said you wanted to glue that to the wheel. Do you want a hole in that? Yeah, he said he wants a hole. Oh, I didn't hear that. Part. I so. wanted to glue the stick. Okay. He wants to so, glue the stick on here. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it out. So I have a drill here that I'm getting set up for Robert. Now, what's a good idea, Robert? Now, nah, let's not hit our face, please. That's not very safe, right? Okay. So... Robert, what, what stick are you going to be using to, that you want to put the wheels on? That one that you have in your hand or like the bigger one or what? This one. Okay. So where's the hole going to be? You said you wanted a hole. In here. Okay. Like a hole in the Okay. So how big of a hole do you need? About a little about this size of the end. Awesome. So for it to stick in there and make it move. Yeah, so we could estimate that size, right? Let me pull this bit out here if I could get it out. Here. Alright. Can I see the stick? Can we measure and put it up against here? And see. Maybe a little bit bigger, huh? Maybe this one, this size, a 764 is that one looked a little better, huh? What do you think? All right, so Daddy's going to put it in here for you. Make sure it's secure. Do you remember how to drill? Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. You have to drill. leave it on here. Right, okay. And Daddy, Daddy's going to hold the material for you so it doesn't spin. You got the drill? Get it? Okay, you got it? And make sure your hole is straight when you do this. Okay. Make sure the drill's straight, not just straight, okay? Good job, okay? Push the button as we pull out. Grab the drill, buddy. You gotta hold the drill. You gotta pull the drill. Pull it up. There you go. Good job. Awesome, next one. That, that hole's perfect. It's like right perfect in the center. All right, let's do the next one. Hold the drill properly. Okay, you can use two hands if you want, but hold it properly from the handle so you can control it. It's hard. Okay, it's hard to do that? All right. Awesome, pull up. Perfect. There we go. He does. Robert does have really great plans for his mousetrap car. All right, Robert, your holes are here. Now what are you going to do? Thick. Let's put it on the table so we can be safe. Oh, you got it in there. Good job. Awesome. And now what? Ooh, now it looks like all right. <laughs> now it looks like what? Wait. It looks like wait. Maylan, can you plug in the hot glue gun for me? So Star Sonic said, how does he know what CDs are? He should use Spotify as wheels. He actually <laughs> loves to listen to Spotify. You do like Spotify, huh? Mm, I have Spotify yeah. on my phone. Have you ever heard a CD before, though? 
No, I don't think you've ever <laughs> heard of CD. <laughs> but you use CDs for Xbox. That's true. Oh, you could have okay. video game CDs. You're right. Okay, this one needs to be a little bigger. Yeah. yeah. And we talked about cassette players too, huh? You learned about cassettes the other day. Yeah. Actually, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday we had a whole conversation about CD players and cassette players. And how we had to wait for our song on the radio to come on. We couldn't just go to Spotify and pick it. Huh. <laughs> All right. In the old days, you had to listen to a cassette. And also on your TV. On your TV. Yeah, we had to sit there. We couldn't just pick our shows and record them and rewind. Unless we recorded it on a VHS tape, which is like a big cassette tape. All right. So now what? So you want to glue that on there? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to experiment and try to do that. Our glue is going to get hot real quick. We Wait, just it's it weight. Tell mm -hmm. me more. What do you mean it's weight? Oh, it's like a barbell to lift weights. <laughs> Robert's getting so strong over there. Look at that. Working those muscles out while our hot glue gun gets hot. I uh, like getting those glasses on. <laughs> Oh, you can't see the glasses. Hey, Robert, while we're waiting for oh, that glue no. gun to get hot, what is your next idea going to be for the mousetrap car? Mm. You can maybe do a second one of these. Okay, so should we start working on that while we wait for the hot glue gun to get hot? Mm -hmm. All right. And you want to use small wheels or you want to use big wheels? Small, like the same size. Yeah, you don't want to use big wheels for it? All right, we'll try with the small wheels. Those ones have holes in it. Try to find ones that don't have holes. Because those holes are too big for your, your stick. Fall right through. Hmm. All of them have holes. <laughs> There's a couple that don't. Like this one doesn't. And then there's another green one. So we'll have green wheels in the front, maybe, and yellow wheels in the back. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yellow. All right. You ready to make a hole again here? And a couple things that you might see us doing that, oh, don't break it. Aww. Then how are you going to have that for your wheels? Okay, we're going we're gonna to fix that in a moment. Let's put that to the side real quick, okay? We'll fix it in one second. So make it like the same size. Well, it was almost the same size. Okay, but we'll fix it. We'll cut it right here nice, and we're going to do something really cool in a moment. You might notice that as I have Robert drilling here, I don't want to make any holes into our, our dining room table here. So I have another piece of wood that I have underneath it, so that way it can protect my table as Robert drills the holes. You ready, Robert? Okay, okay let, let's, let's teach you something. Hold it, and then tip it up, okay? And if you need to support the weight, you could use this hand over here. Okay. Okay, now get in the center, right in the center. Make sure the drill is straight. Professional. Okay, now pull it and pull up. Perfect, you got it. Next wheel. There you go. Look at you. You're an expert. You're going to be building houses soon. You already built a house, huh? We built your playhouse together. Okay. Now, Robert, you wanted to fix this, right? So you were trying to break it, and look how it splintered all nasty. Now, that's going to be kind of hard to get a wheel on there, right? So what do you think we should use? Huge. Huge scissors? All right. Should Daddy try cutting that, or do you want to try cutting? Who, you or me? Got it? Okay. Uh, that's kind of hard, huh? All right, I have another plan. Look over there. What did Daddy bring to the table today? Remember that? The saw? You want to use the saw? All right, so we have a scroll saw here, and a scroll saw is a uh, an electric saw. They have mechanical ones, two hand ones, but we have, don't, don't turn it on yet. We have an electric one here, and these are relatively safe for kids to use because it only has, 
I don't know if you can see on camera here. It only has a really thin blade here that reciprocates up and down, and it, it moves at relatively low speeds. So it, it's not going to cut off any fingers or anything like that. It's a very easy saw and safe saw to use. Robert, you've used this saw before, right? Okay. Do you remember how to use it? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to help you, though, okay, to so make sure that you remember because it's been a while. So before I turn this on, I just want to give you guys a heads up. It might be a little bit loud. So if you have headphones on or anything like that, uh, now would be a good time to lower the volume a little bit until the saw is on so you don't blow out your eardrum or something, right? All right. It doesn't sound that loud in person, but over the, the microphone, it might be loud. Okay, stand up, buddy. Scoot over. Grab your stick. Microphone. Yeah, grab your stick. So we're just going to come down here, sit down, bud. We'll turn the saw on. Now, how are you going to cut this? Do you remember? Wait, wait for me to be looking at you. Okay. Now we're going to put it there. Oops. Hold it from down here, two hands like this. I know, and it's a little bit smaller than our front wheels, but that'll be a cool design there. All right, Robert, I'm going to put these on for you. Now, Robert's idea that he wanted to do with these wheel and axles. Hey, buddy, where'd you go? We lost Robert. He is playing with his dog. Robert, I need your help. All right, he's back. Okay, I have your, your wheels ready to go. Now, your idea, what was your idea to do? What did you want to do? Okay, so you want to glue the axle to the cardboard, right? That's what you want to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, here you go. Oh, let me move this camera back. I forgot about that. Sorry. There you go. Is it hot glue gun? I think it's hot, ready to go. Yep. Oh. Okay, be careful because that tip gets really hot, right? Ooh, this is a tiny mini pistol. Okay, well, where do you want to put the glue? Put the glue, like, do you want to put it on the stick or on there? Well, let's put it, you said you wanted this to glue to there, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't you put some on here? Squeeze it. Squeeze the trigger. A little hard for you to squeeze. All right. And now let's glue that, like you said, onto here. That's what you said you wanted to do, right? Okay. Now let's test your car with one wheel real quick. With two wheels, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's glued there. See if your car moves. The wheels are moving. The wheels are moving a little bit, right? Awesome. Up, oh, but see, look, let's turn it around. Look what it did as it moved. Do you see it was spinning this whole thing? Notice how the wheels are spinning with the axle. You see that? How the wheels, this is turning with it. It's all one piece. Would that be a good idea to attach this here? Would it allow your wheels to move really good? No. So what should, what do you think we should do? What's a better idea? Ooh. Mm. Why don't you go get why don't you go get one of your big trucks real quick from your room? Um, you mean like a big yeah. truck? Yeah, well, well mommy's means. gonna get it for you. So we can look at the design of that. Okay. You go get that. Both of you go get that. So what Robert's doing here is a common thing that a lot of students do. And even some adults do this if they don't have experience working with axles and uh, wheels. And there's a couple different things that you have to be aware of. Is that the axle, depending on how you configure it, the axle can move with the wheel. So by turning the axle, you turn your wheel set. 
Or you could have a free spinning wheel where the axle is stationary and the wheels turn. When doing the mousetrap project, it's a better idea to make sure that the wheel and axle system can rotate freely. So what Robert's trying to do while he's gone, I don't want to tell him, is he's trying to find a way to discover how he can attach the axle to the chassis of his vehicle and still allow the axle to rotate freely. Now, while he's gone, I have a couple ideas I'm going to share with all of you, and then let's let him come back and see what he can discover. One easy technique that I like are my trusty paper clips, and I like to put those paper clips, if you're using cardboard, you could stick it in between the layers of the cardboard, so you can have it vertically up like that. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. See that? So you could do that with two paper clips. And by doing that, you can create a little section in the paper clip there. That's going to be exactly the same measurement because the paper clips are the same exact length. So as long as your cardboard or your chat, whatever chassis you're using, are cut straight, you can then slide the axle. Gotta hurry, he's coming back. You can slide the axle through here and let it spin freely. All right, Robert is back. So no, nobody tell him what we just talked about, okay? Awesome, let's look at your car here, Robert. So Robert brought a toy car that he has. It's a monster truck. A toy monster truck, excuse me. It's an awesome, cool monster truck, huh? And let's, let's investigate the wheel and axles here. Look at the bottom here and spin your wheels and look and identify if you can see what's happening there. There's like something there that has a little handle there with a hole, mm. but they have something there on the wheel attached like your car. Oh, so on the body of the vehicle, they have a little part that has a hole in it, right? And what goes through those holes? The wheels with a little metal part. Oh, and that metal part, what is that like that you're making on your mousetrap car? It's wood. It's wood. So this right here is the same part as the metal part on your toy car. And you know what the name of that part is called? What? The axle. Okay. So your wheels, notice how your wheels are attached to the axle and they can spin freely. That allows your car to roll across the ground, right? It also can do flips if you push it down. Oh, that's cool. Almost, um, so many monster trucks they could do. Awesome. So let's see if we can make that happen with our car. So, hey, Robert, so what do you think we have to do to the body of our car here? What do you think we have to do? What are your thoughts? <laughs> we'll show the dog again. He made a special guest appearance in our, our first stream. Uh, so maybe we'll bring him back at the end so we can show off Cole. At our last stream? Yeah. Did he, was he in the last one? Maybe his voice was. His howling, right? Okay. So, Robert, let's see here. How can we connect this to the vehicle, but allow it to roll, spin freely? We need like a pump here. Uh, we don't need all that. We need this piece right here. You see that on camera? You see how there's that little thing with the hole there? That's what we need. So how do we do that? Can you think of a way to set that up with this? Oh, this actually doesn't have a hole. It has... It's a little wide. But there was a hole before you put the wheels on to go through, right? Mm -hmm. So, buddy, how can we make that over here? That same design here. Now, this problem, this pro, uh, sorry, process that Robert is doing here is a really interesting process in engineering. It's called reverse engineering. So instead of you building something, you're looking at something that's already built, and you're you're looking at how they made it and using ideas from there. Because 
Engineers don't always have to reinvent the wheel. They do research to figure out what's already made and use that to help support their design. So Robert is reverse engineering right now. I have an idea, Robert. Can I share it with you? Mm -hmm. Can they make those little gaps here? So on his truck here, there are little gaps in the plastic that allow the axle to fit through. And the axle is stuck there, right? So let's try to make something with that, with the stuff that we have. So I have a couple things, Robert. While you were gone, I was actually telling everybody. Tell me. We're going to use this as the axle. What is that? A paper clip. And you didn't even hear me say that. You were in another room, huh? And you came up with that on your own. Good idea. Show me what you do. Because I saw how they were fit together. They both have Oh, it has, a, it has a very similar shape to your monster truck. Awesome. So show us how where you're going to put those paper clips. Right, right, right here. Okay. Go for it. Do it. Okay, you want to glue them there? There you go. Here's your glue. Thing. It's maybe going to be hard. I think that's a cool idea, though. Look, you wanted to glue them on the edge here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's put a little bit of glue on here. Daddy's going to help you out get this done. Look, I got too much glue on there. Got to replace that thing here. So. I'm hitting the glasses. I know. Hey, Robert, here, look, is that what you meant with the paper clip? Mm -hmm. Like that? Okay. So Robert's idea with the paper clip was to put the paper clip vertically on the side of the cardboard, and we have a little hanging down there. So we have a little hole at the bottom that his axle can fit through. Yeah, like the one Mommy made with, um, on the zipline one? Mm-hmm. Like the zipline one that Mommy made, right? Mm-hmm. Good you idea. Do you see how paper clips are a magic tool when you're doing projects at home? I'll get one person back. Awesome. Okay, next. What's next, Robert? Where are you going? All right. So we have two paper clips here. They're set up like that. We have our axle system that can go through the paper clips. This idea from Robert was so creative, putting them on the edge like that. It's very, very creative. Awesome. So now if you look at Robert's wheel and axle system, Robert, look at how it rolls freely now. Doesn't that roll a lot better? Mm-hmm. Cool. And then what's the next step? To making this car. Hmm. Again? Do it again? On the other side. On the, the other side. Okay. Do you want me to put those paper clips for you? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have any more paper clips. You just bent one out. It was already bent. It was already bent. That one's bent too. So we don't have any more paper clips, so we can't do the other side. Um, how about this guy? That guy's bent too. So I had another idea that I thought about off camera. So I wanted to maybe share that idea with you now since we're out of paper clips and we can't finish it with Robert's idea. I have this little clear hose line here and this is actually aquarium hose line, right? From an aquarium. So we could use this, uh, this hose to do something very similar to what Robert did there with his paper clips. And by cutting a little piece of this hose line, I'm cutting them to approximately equal length. I could change the length later. I have plenty of hose line here if need be. And we can do the same thing Robert did with the paper clips on the front or back end. <clears throat> and we could do that with the hoses on the bottom by gluing the little piece of hose to the cardboard. 
Again, as I do these projects, I'm just looking for random things that I have laying around my house that may be useful to completing whatever task I come up with or Robert comes up with. So today, this is Robert's design, huh? Why Robert? not your design? Well, because we, st we started with your design, so let's go ahead and finish your design, okay? That's okay, and we can see how that works. So I'm using a, a tape measure here. I just want to make sure that these hoses are about equal distance away from the edge of my cardboard. So that way my axles can be relatively straight and it'll prevent my car from veering sideways, hopefully. So it doesn't matter what measurement you choose for this so long as they're roughly the same measurement on both sides. Some... So this is the one that Robert, we put glue on to do his trial experiment here. So I'm just gonna scrape this glue off so that way it doesn't interfere with the rolling. So we reduce the friction by removing this glue. Robert, you're preparing your Lego guys to go on the car? Mm -hmm. They're going to see who can go on the car in the battle, which team. Oh, cool. Which team gets the first ride on the car? They choked the alien out. They choked the alien? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have the front axle or back axle. I don't know which direction it is going yet. We'll ask Robert that in a second. But we have his design here. Awesome. Uh-oh. I just broke that off on accident. Let's glue this back on here. All right. The hot glue and paper clip here are giving me a little bit of an issue. So I'm just trying to work that out. And I'm burning myself with hot glue as I do that. Always fun. All right. Sorry, I know this might be hard to show on camera, but I'm trying to see the details in there, too. Awesome. Robert, I'm going to replace these paper clips in the back here because they keep falling off, okay? Can I do that? All right. So I'm going to change the design in the this axle with the paper clips because they keep falling off. And I'm going to use a similar design to what I used in the front here with the, the little hose lines. Now, if you don't have the aquarium tube, another thing that could work similar to what I'm doing here are straws, right, Robert? You could use little straws to do this. Wouldn't that work too? Like if you cut little pieces of straws and glued them to the, the cardboard. Okay, so I'm just gluing these. I hope you guys can see a little bit of what I'm doing here on camera. I know I cut another piece here. I'll grab another one. Another little hose line. So I'm not measuring the side like I said I was going to for the other side. And the reason I'm choosing not to do that is because I still have little glue markers or indicators on the outside from where the paper clips were. So I'm just stealing the location of where the paper clips were with my rubber tubing for the front one. Okay. Feed the axle system through. Okay. All right. Be careful. That's hot, Robert. Okay. Told you. All right, Robert, look. 
Look, your, your card rolls really good now. What's next? What do you want to do now? Maybe the idea of putting the mousetrap on it. Yeah, so if we put the mousetrap up front here, when the mousetrap gets pulled back, watch your finger, when the mousetrap gets pulled back, it could pull maybe a string. Are you looking here? It could pull maybe a string that could make this axle here turn. But how can we get that axle here to turn, buddy? Do you want Daddy to finish that up? Um, stick. You put it, when you have it all set mm -hmm. up, and it doesn't turn down in like one second, mm -hmm. you put the stick there so it turns down and go. Ah, gotcha. It so looks like a jet pack. I think we need a location on the back here where we could attach a string to, to get the mousetrap to go. Uh, so I'm going to grab a marker. I'm going to roughly measure. You could be more precise if you like. But I am going to roughly measure a little square piece in the cardboard that I want to cut out. So you can see that little square right here that I'm going to cut out. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the axle off really quickly so that way it's not in my way. And I could cut out that little square. Now because it's just cardboard, I'm going to go ahead and use the, the scissors to do this. If you're using a wood material, or metal or something else, you might need a, a sharper tool, a better cutting tool, than a pair of scissors to do that. And that's where a saw like the scroll saw on the side here really come into handy. It also could come into handy, you could cut cardboard on there as well. And by doing that, you could actually get a cleaner cut. So, I am going to go ahead and just cut this out with cardboard for the time being. So now I have a little cutout rectangle in the back. So when I put the wheel and axle through, I now have access to the string, I'm sorry, to the axle from the top side. So I could tie a string and rotate it around here. And now we could get motion. You can already see a move as I turn the axle and drop it. It'll start rolling. Cool. So what do you think, Robert? How does it look now? Very good. Okay, it looks good, right? Okay. Now the mouse trap we want to put towards the opposite end of the vehicle. Now the more and more uh, distance you have between the mouse trap and the rear axle. The, the more string you'll be able to wrap around there to get it. So we're going to do that. There, there's some other things here that we got to talk about, but I'll let that, that come back to us after we try this. All right. So I'm going the mouse trap to the front. Very simple design we have here. We're working on the basics. Cool. How's that look, Robert? Can you hand me that string over there, please? Right. So I'm going to just cut a little bit of string here. Now, a lot of times when you do the mousetrap car for the very first time, uh, obviously, this isn't my first time doing it, but uh, when it is people's first time, they just want to attach the, the string to the mousetrap like I'm doing here. So we're gonna sh I'm going to show you something as we do this on what happens here. So I'm just tying a knot 
to the top of the mouse trap. So that way when it pulls back here, I can pull the mouse trap back. I don't know if you guys can see on camera, but the mouse trap is moving. And so I'll be able to pull that back and wrap it around the axle. So let me cut this string here. I don't need that much string right now. So I'm just going to, again, tie a, a knot around the string to the axle. Robert is having so much fun over there with his Legos, huh? Mm -hmm. What happened to our mousetrap car? Ah. What happened to our mousetrap car? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now as we rotate this around, we'll be able to tighten the string around. So I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do this part, Robert, because I don't want you to hurt your finger, okay? In case it releases. And then what usually happens when you have the mouse trap like this, we're gonna see right now. Ready? Can you do a countdown? Three, two, one. And what did you notice? It what happened? moved the opposite way. Okay. Because the wheels were a little bit squiggly. Uh huh. So you notice your wheels were squiggly and they were jump, jumping up and down, right? Okay. And, and one of the reasons why it does that, there's actually two reasons, Robert. One of the reasons, remember we were talking about those little spiky things or grippy things on Daddy's truck tires when we go off-roading? Well, you need something on here to get good traction with the ground to be able to move. Oh, because they have these hard. Yeah, so they slip. They're very slippery. So what can we put on there that's like rubber from tires? We have a bag of rubber bands here. And so you could add to your wheels something that is a sticky or friction type surface. For us, we're just going to use simple rubber bands right now. Okay. So that, that's one of the problems that people run into when they do their first design iteration. They will put these rubber bands, they will forget to put some sort of rubber band or traction material on their wheels. And so their car will burn out. It won't go anywhere. It'll just spin the wheels. Okay, so let's try that now, and let's see how that little simple fix has improved our design here. All right, Robert, ready? Are you ready to count? Can you count? Three, two, one. one. So now we got some motion in there, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we got a little bit of motion in there, but because of the design of the car, the length of the car, we don't have a lot of string here to make the car move. So we also notice that the mousetrap moves really quickly to shut, like it's designed to do so. You can add some sort of stick to the end of the mousetrap, and we call this a leverage arm. And what that does is a couple things. It increases the distance of the string from the rear axle. So you, you get more winds of your axle, but it also increases the length of the, the bar that is attached to the mousetrap. So as you increase the distance away from the spring, as you increase the distance away from the spring and the edge, you in turn, decrease the amount of force that's being used at a, a time to pull the, the car. So if you want an idea, this is called torque. You can do a simple experiment at home with uh, maybe like a front door or like a heavy door. Try pushing uh, towards the hinge, the, the point that curves where your door curves. Try pushing with like one finger towards the inside of the hinge hinge and then slowly work your way out and you can see that as you work yourself away from the the rotation hinge you can use less force so through the concept of torque so we're doing a similar concept here where you could increase the length of the bar and by doing that you decrease the the force that's being applied on the axle so that's going to make it not move as quickly to shut the mouse trap. That gives you longer duration for the string to pull, 
and you don't use all the energy and force at one time to make the car accelerate. So you get force applied over a longer period of time and hopefully more motion. What question am I ignoring? Ah, this is a this is looking good, but I feel like you're going to have trouble convincing a mouse to drive it. <laughs> How's a mouse gonna drive this car, Robert? You think? <laughs> the mouse trap on this car, and you can go. So Robert says, I don't know if you guys caught that, Robert said as the mouse gets caught in there and starts running, he's going to make the car move. <laughs> so that might be a convincing way to get him to run, huh? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to remove this string. I'm going to remove the string that we used for our test purposes right now. I'm going to add a longer string and a leverage arm to give more torque and decrease the amount of force applied over time. Robert, we're going to eat, eat off camera. We don't want to see you eating. Thank you. Awesome. So I need to attach now this leverage arm to the mouse trap. And I am going to use a simple method right now. There's different ways that you could do it, anything that you can use to attach. But I'm just going to use a simple duct tape to make it quicker. Awesome. I think my duct tape here is too long. Let me shorten this duct tape a little bit. Maybe I don't need that much. I'm missing my partner in crime here helping me design this. So. Let's see what I could do here. Awesome, awesome. So you can see I just made a simple leverage arm here. So as I pull here, and it's actually easier for me to pull the mouse trap back now. Not as hard as it was earlier when I'm trying to hold it back here and my arm's shaking and all of that. It's a simple push, again, that's the leverage you gain from the concept of torque. And a longer distance away from the center of rotation. So that has a lot of practical uses beyond building a mousetrap, but one is in the mousetrap part here. Simple design. Now it's also going to increase the length of string that I can use for the mousetrap car design here. So let's see how long of a string I need. <laughs> well played, Robert. He didn't stick around to hear your response. He just mic dropped and walked off stage. All right. So now I got to find a way to attach to the front here. And again, this is just a real rudimentary car here. You can make it look nicer and fancier. I'm just trying to get the basic concepts in here to all of you. And uh, then hopefully you can make a design of your own that when you have more time to put all the parts together and really think out the design here. Hmm. I'm trying to find a way that I could easily attach the string to the front end. And I have one idea. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to go over to my saw here. And I'm going to try to make a little groove at the top here that I can put the, the, the string in to hold it there. Let's see if this is going to work.
cut a string somewhere. So now I have a little groove that I'm going to fit the string into that will help it hold in place. And then I am going to put duct tape, trusty duct tape. Between duct tape and paper clips, I think I can make a whole lot of the projects. What do you think, Robert? Mm -hmm. You think I could use duct tape and paper clips in like every single project we do? It is a very handy and trusty material. Awesome. Look at that. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, looks like my axle fell off there though. A little bit more hot glue back here. A little bit more. New glue stick. These little hot glue guns, they get so hot. If you're using one of them, be careful. The bigger ones don't seem to get this hot. But these little ones, they get really, really hot. All right, stop with the popping, please. Okay. I don't know. Where's my my assistant? Right here. Where have you where have you been, dude? Everybody wants to see your project on camera. That is my project. I think it's daddy's project. You don't look like you're working on it. No. I mean you can't, you can't just take the credit for something you're not doing. Well, I came up with it. Oh, that's true. That is true. You came up with this design. Can you help me out here? Can you start pushing the stick up gently? Not, not down. Up. Push up. Push. Push, push. Like that. So I can wrap it around the string. This might be the most challenging part is getting that string to wrap around. Okay, let's see here. Usually you want to make a way to hold the string or give something around there to stick into it, which gave me an idea right now. I'm going to use my trusty paper clip again. How do you call everything trusty? Robert, the answer to everything in this project is duct tape and paper clips. Duct tape and paper clips will get the job done. Alright, I need wire cutters. May, do you know where my keys are? Is it the wire cutters? No. I always have a pair of pliers and wire cutters in my pocket with me when I have my keys, but I don't have my keys on me, so I'm missing my tool, my little tool I carry everywhere. Yes, Darksana, I do mean everything in life. The answer is paper clips and duct tape. Huh. Looks so intense from one angle and looks like barely moving from the other. Interesting. I don't know if I have the answer to that question. So my idea here to help me get the string to stay attached is I'm going to cut a little piece. And of course I lost it. I'm going to cut another little piece. And let's try not to lose it this time. Where are those pieces back to? Third time is a charm. I'm going to cut a third little piece. And let's not lose this one. Where are they going to? They just disappeared. There it is. Awesome. Found my third little piece. Third time, it was definitely a charm. And I am trying to, on my rear axle here, I'm going to make a little hole in the wood. 
and I'm going to put the metal into the wood. So that way it gives me a perpendicular piece that I could use to help uh, spool the string around. So I'm going to swap out my drill bits here. Really, really tiny drill bit. My tool system doesn't want to work for me today. There we go. And I gotta be very, I have to be very careful because I don't want to make too big of a hole or too deep. Ooh, this might still be too big. Let's see now. And look at me, I'm doing it on the wrong side. Good way I caught myself. See, Robert, I almost made a big critical mistake because not, you're not here helping me. I need your help, your support. All right, so I'm now making a little hole into the stick. Now, it would be a lot better if I had a drill press here because this piece is so small. But I think I'll be able to get this. Let's see. Patience, patience, and I don't know. I don't know if you all can see what I'm doing here on camera. That's good enough. I just made a little, little tiny hole. I think it's too tiny for you to see on camera that I'm going to put that piece of paper clip through. I need to work on keeping track of these little pieces. They get lost in the table here. It would be good to have a little tray that you could set little pieces and little parts in. So that way they don't get lost. But luckily I have a lot of little paper clips bent here. So I'll just make a fourth piece. And there it is. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this. And then gently place it into the hole. Once I have that paper clip, you can see what I did there. The little metal thing to help me wrap the string around the axle. I'll put a little bit more glue to help secure it, make sure it doesn't come out. Okay, hopefully that's strong enough to hold. I think that'll work. I like how that's secured in there. What do you think, Robert? You are not into work and doing a project today, huh? That's okay. We have another fun project we're going to do on Monday. That I think you might like better than the mousetrap car build. I think the mousetrap car build is a little bit too intricate for you, huh? Too many little things you got to work on right now? That's okay. <laughs> awesome. So I ran into another problem here. I made a little piece of metal on the middle, and while well, my axle was outside the vehicle, and so now I'm looking and I'm like, hey, I'm ready to put my axle inside. And I'm like, uh oh, how am I going to do this without breaking that metal piece off? Because it needs to be in the middle, but I can't it's like slide the axle all the way through anymore. So 
problem solving, things arise, you don't think about things while you're doing them always until it's too late. I'm just going to remove one of these rubber tubes really fast. I will slide it over that wood axle and then use some hot glue to hot glue it back to the cardboard. Awesome. Wait for that glue to dry. And I think if we've done a simple, simple car that we should be able to get going. What do you think, Robert? You think the car is going to move? I'm just checking the clearance on everything, making sure everything, there's no rubbing anywhere. Put our wheels back on. Awesome. Other wheel back on. We got a free moving car. Now I'll try to get this string. Huh? <laughs> I want to mess up again. And my wheels just fell off. Let me put my wheels back on. This is a silly design car, huh, Robert? It's falling apart. You're already here to help me finish it up. I didn't know what your next design was going to be. Okay. I don't have no more de design. You had no more design ideas? That's okay. Awesome. So I think this is working good. It grabbed my string. Allows me to wind it up quicker here. Okay. You gotta keep the tension on there to make sure that the string wraps around tight. Awesome. Let's see if we have movement here. Robert, you wanna get a countdown? Mm -hmm. I don't hate counting. We're ready. Three. Two, one, go! What did it hit? It moved and then stopped. The thing that helped me wind the car then stopped the car. All right, another countdown, Robert. Three. Oh, my rubber band fell off here. I'm going to ask for some assistance from my helpers off camera here while I hold this because I don't want to let go of the string. I didn't want to set the trap either. I just want to hold it down. All right. Let's see. Three. All right. Three. Two. One. Go. Awesome. It's moving. It'll keep moving, but it hit the computer. So I just don't have enough room here on camera. But you can see if I let go, it's going to continue moving. That's an awesome car. I, I have a feeling that Robert, now that he sees his car moving, he's going to be playing with his car all day off camera. Yep, exactly. Robert just wants to test it when it's done being built. So here is a simple mousetrap car design. Uh, I looked into the simple base, the basics behind a car. Of course, you can make the design look neater and nicer. You could clean it up. You could shorten the axles. I had the idea of making like an actual car, like a looking like a car out of cardboard and cutting it on the saw here. Uh, but time is always a constraint. So I just didn't have the time to do that today. But, but the car works, it moves, it has all the basic components. You can also experiment if you're doing this project at home or for a class, there's different ways that you can make the car go further. Uh, you can make the car go faster. Uh, it all depends on what, what your design challenge is. 
if you were to put bigger wheels like CB wheels in the back here on the rear axle, that would allow you to make your car travel further just by putting bigger wheels. And the idea is because the, the, the circumference of the wheel and the larger diameter of the, the diameter, the whole diameter of the wheel, will allow you the, the wheel to get more distance covered per rotation of the axle than a smaller wheel. Now with this, this design that Robert has here, it would be a really simple addition. I would just have to glue the larger wheels to his smaller wheel, like so, and then I could actually change the design to accommodate larger or smaller wheels just by putting them and gluing them onto the wheel hubs that are already here. So that, that's one thing that you could do. If you had another design challenge where you wanted to make the mousetrap car go uphill, I know there's some mousetrap competitions where going flat is too easy, so they make the design challenge if you could go up a, a 30 degree incline or something of that sort. So how would you change the design if you wanted to go up an incline? Would it be a good idea to have a long leveraging arm on here? Would it be a good idea to have large wheels in the back? Every design challenge will propose a different design for the mousetrap car than just a basic simple design. So if you're doing this for another teacher's project or an engineering design challenge, challenge yourself to do different tasks with your design and, and see if your basic car can do it or what modifications you'll have to make to it. Anyways, I know I'm out of time today. I've gone a little bit over, but that's okay. I'm happy we got our car working and ready to go. Robert and I will be back here. Come here, Robert. Come on, buddy. Robert and I will be back here again on Monday. We have a pretty cool project that we're going to do. Do you know what it's going to be? What? We're going to be making airplane cargo racers. So we're going to have to use paper to make airplanes that could transport cargo. And then we could have like a race to see like how many people make or how much cargo we could get across like a line in a certain amount of time with our design. How about when we do a, how about we do two from the cargo? We put some people in to uh -huh. drop off the cargo. Maybe you have to put people on there. So we will be doing that project on Monday. Please come back and join us Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for another wonderful project. Again, this is 2-Bit Circus Foundation with our creative yeah. learning hour. Uh, have a great weekend, and we will see you again on Monday. Bye, everyone. Say bye, Robert. Bye. And we'll show the dog on Monday. I didn't get to show the dog today. So everyone, take care. Have a good weekend.